from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 1. The Gospel of Luke. Gospel of Luke 5, 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. 5, 1. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them, and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a litter from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and the net was breaking. So they signalled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. Amen. The first meeting of Simon, the son of Jonah, which will be called later on Peter, with Christ, was a while ago, and when Jesus looked in Peter's eyes, and Peter into Jesus' eyes, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah, you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. He didn't say any other words to him. You are Simon, the son of Jonah, but a time will come that you will be called Peter, Rock. And we know very, very well that later on he said to him, And upon this rock, I will build my church. But then it stopped there. Peter entered. And the right thing to say is that before the world was made, Peter was in the plan of God through Jesus Christ. Before the world was made. And the plan of God evolves slowly. When we say it rightly, the plan of God is revealed to Simon, the fisherman, slowly. The first meeting, you are Simon and you'll be called Peter. He didn't understand many things then. But a time will come that an invitation will be made. An invitation that's personal from Christ to Peter. An invitation they won't leave any question marks in the heart of Peter, the sincere heart of Peter, because it will be directed to that Simon, the small Simon, who's hidden in the life of Simon, the son of Jonah, who was waiting for the Messiah to come. He went to John the Baptist and heard his sermons, who said, the one who's to come is coming, who is greater than I. He's coming, he's coming. And Peter said, he's coming, when is he coming? Who is he? How is he? And all of a sudden, Andrew comes and says to him, his brother, we found the one who is to come, the Messiah. Let's go and see him. The Jew closed to him, and then he said to him, you are Simon, but you'll be called Peter. And they left. They separated, but inside of him, he received the message not all of Peter, but that small Peter who dwelt in Peter, who accepted the word of God, who examined, who seeked the word of God. This small, 
Who in the future, when everything is shaken, will be brought down around him? Then, Peter will be revealed. Peter, Apostle Peter. But that was inside of him. But there were other things in there too. The fish, his parents, his wife, his boats, the sea. There were many things inside of Peter which strangled him. But it was in there, inside of him. And what was inside of him, only one person knew it. He who examines hearts and kidneys. He knew him well. And now he's preparing a nice scene for the great invitation and the great challenge so he can upgrade his relationship with Peter so he can help Peter to upgrade his relationship with Jesus Christ. He goes out fishing. Christ has scattered all the fish because he's the one true God. Not even one fish will come close to the nets of Peter and James and John's. Jesus walks over to Peter's empty boat. And a multitude gathers there. And they're playing their role also. And they crowded him there. A perfect scene, my beloved brethren. It is necessary for us to realize that we are in the plan of God. From the moment we said, Christ, save me. From the moment we said, Christ, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. And especially from the moment when our hearts decide, even a small, small part desired, a little bit of our heart desired the glory of God. And I'll point this out. Because I must separate the Christian who cares about Christ only for his own gain. I want Christ to bless me. I want Christ to help me at my work. I want Christ to fix my family. I want Christ to increase me. I want, I want, I want him to do all my favours. This Christian is out of the plan of God. Christ does love him. And we are like that, aren't we? All of us. God does love us, but inside, God sees something very, very good. We care about the glory of Christ. And God wants to increase this, to make it grow, to bring it out onto the surface, to fix it. He wants us to start building it. He wants us to care about it, for this small George that's inside of us. For that small Christian who's inside of us, covered of all these things that the world offers abundantly and takes us away and we make small, this small George, in which I would call, as God calls it, this small Christ which is inside of us. And this small Christ must grow, be shown. So when everything will be brought down around us, because they will be brought down, God will bring them down, so only He can be revealed. Him, big and everything else small and unimportant. And He made this nice scene, so He can change the life of Peter, Simon. And He drew close to him, in his boat, and said, Please, let me enter your boat, because the multitude is crowding me, so I can speak, preach, and glorify God. And this small Peter overcame. The small Christ inside of him overcame. And he said, I'm letting you enter my boat. And there, the great miracle took place for the life of Peter. The great change. A great change. He heard the word of God. He heard the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when he finished, he heard the word of Christ being directed to him. Your boat is empty, eh? You were fishing all night. You sowed a lot, but did not reap a thing. You cast out your nets, but you didn't catch a thing. You got tired. You toiled, but you had no results. All night you were fishing, but you didn't catch a thing. Come now. 
with my word. Try again. Come now with me inside your boat and try again. Come, let's fulfill. And I would add the scene in which my father has prepared. Come, let's walk the way in which God has prepared for you. I'm teaching you, go now. Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. And fish, Peter. Another way, another path. Climb that mountain. Cut some wood. But what are you saying now, Lord? It's midday. My labour will be in vain. Or not, I was fishing, I didn't catch a thing and I'll catch now midday. Have you seen any fisherman fishing in midday? He would be mad to do so. To cast his nets in the middle of the day and catch what? But this small Peter said, But I will try. Not the sea, not my nets, but your word, Lord. Dear Lord, how important this is. I will try your word. That's what Zerubbabel said. I will try your word. And how will I try your word? Submitting to it, obeying it, to what you're saying. Which seems illogical. What's the mountain and cutting wood got to do with sowing? With planting? What's that got to do with it? What's one got to do with the other? A Christian life is one thing, and our life in actions is something different. We have to bring up our children. I have to educate my children. They have to study. I've got so many things to do. We've got other things to do. What's that got to do with this? But this, I have to do this and that, grows the earthly things, and makes small the spiritual things. And Christ comes to change these things now. Make the spiritual things grow, and the earthly things will not become small, they'll grow also. But can these things happen? Try the word. Try it. I remember, when I was younger in the faith, we used to say to our children, all of us, not only I, Maybe you've got studying to do. Since you rest, take a break. Your break will be when you go to church. And you will rest there and you will receive strength from the Lord. Now the young children say, they don't come to church because I've got studying to do. Let me tell you something. In my years, the first years when I had younger children, all those children who did this failed. Whether they failed in school, but they had very good grades, they failed or they failed in life, or even worse of all, they failed in their Christian life. My brethren, we do not win the world with our strength and our tryings. We win everything with Christ. We must understand this. We must comprehend this. We must separate this inside of us. I've got lots of work and I can't come to church. I've got lots of work to do. I have to make money. You'll be poor always. Miserable. Pitiful. If you don't go to Christ to bless you. If you don't go to Christ to upgrade your relationship with Him. If you don't ask from Christ to come into your life and make the great turnover. Because in one point in time, for all that man is labouring for, that are shaken, will be brought down, they will fall. And what will be left standing will be those that are not shaken. In one point in time. And let me tell you the vision that God showed me, because today was an amazing night for me. He showed me people, Christians, striving in the darkness. They had a small light, but they were striving and labouring. They were worrying for many things. And they worried and worried. And their little light remained trembling in the dark. 
cross was trying to preserve it. And sometimes it burnt out. There were other Christians who had their faces turned to the face of Christ and they saw Christ and Christ would look at them and they shone like stars in the dark heavens and their light increased and increased and increased and it increased until the perfect light came. The light which is brighter than the sun. With earthly logic, this seems illogical, like it came to the ears of Peter when he heard that he had to fish in the middle of the day. But with the word of God, it comes to our ears as a truth, and the truth is proven by its results. Peter said, I will try it so I can see. I will try the illogical word of God, the illogical of spiritual things. I will try what the Word of God says, that the natural man cannot understand the spiritual things. He cannot comprehend them because he's natural. Natural man. And he launched his boat with his nets, not prepared for fishing, in the middle of the day. And he launched the boat into the deep and he let down his nets for a catch. And with amazement, he saw his nets being flooded with fish as he'd never seen them before. And the boat was full. The boat nearly sunk. He cried out for help. Come, James. Come, John. We're sinking. Come and get some fish. John came in the middle of the day close to Peter's boat. It was he who made the first step, and many followed after him. And James and John's boat was filled also with the fish that Peter had caught, and they were amazed. And they were so amazed and astonished by this catch of fish. With one net they filled two boats. And Peter fell on his knees and said, Lord, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. You are holy, Lord. And the Lord said to him, the second word that was directed to him, Do not be afraid. From now on, that you tried my word, that you were convinced, that you obeyed, and you do not say to me, what nonsense are you speaking of now? I will cast my nets now, in the middle of the day. What are you talking about? You don't know. I believe you, accept you, but you don't know a thing about fishing, do you? You don't know a thing about fishing. That's what they once said to me once. You're speaking well, but you don't know about life. You haven't lived in the world. You haven't walked in the world. And I knew very well that unfortunately for 37 years I was in the world and I knew how to walk in the world. But unfortunately they don't know about my new walk with Christ. And now all these people who said these things are trying to find their children which are lost in the world. They're trying to find their wives and their husbands left and right scattered. Because they said to me, you don't know about life. But my beloved brethren, Christ is the life. And we know it very, very well. Because He revealed to us His face. He revealed to us His grace. And He gives us His word. And He asks from us to accept it and believe it. So we can see the great catch of fish in our lives. For us to sow a little and reap a lot. Because these things are not done with the might and power of men, but only with the power of the Holy Spirit. Only Christ can do these things. You know what it is for Christ to bless you. For Christ to bless you. For Christ to bless you. 
For Christ to say, well done, good and faithful servant. May you be blessed. Dear Lord. But, my beloved brethren, Peter, with this, testing the word of God, he made a steadfast decision to leave everything behind and follow Christ. Now, everything's gone. Everything vanished. And only Peter remained. He said, I tried the word of God and it's the truth. I tried Christ and he's the one true God. And he left everything behind. He followed Christ. And he and Andrew and James and John. And they lived three and a half whole years until the resurrection of Christ. One life. They saw everything with their own eyes. And they heard everything with their own ears. And they met many, many things on their path and way. Signs, wonders, great things. Not even for one moment did they ever regret that they left everything and followed Christ. Not even for one moment did they say, what do we do? We lost our lives. But the word of God says, whoever loses his life will gain it. And whoever seeks to gain his life will lose it. Let's be careful of this, I plead with you, because it's the truth of the gospel. Whoever seeks to gain his life with his own power, with his own strength and strive, with his own fight, forgetting and neglecting the word of God, making small Christ which is inside of him, he will lose his life. But whoever loses his life, for Christ's sake and the gospel's sake. In other words, whoever follows and tries the word of God, he will gain his life completely. And the death of Christ came. And the resurrection of Christ came. And now, in the life of Peter, the great change has taken place. All that could be shaken was brought down as he saw Christ risen and all that could not be shaken was left but in his life, in the life of Peter there was, like in the past, a small Christ now there was a small Simon not Peter, but a small Simon was left inside of him and when he was left alone in the complete freedom of the Holy Spirit this small Simon the old Simon, who was very small. He took a desire out of his heart. I'm going fishing. The time came for Christ to uproot from Peter that small Simon who was left inside of him. To sanctify him wholly, body, mind and spirit. To separate him wholly, when he drew close to him, I repeat this, Simon drew close to Jesus, but in reality Jesus, when he met Simon, there was a small Peter inside of him and a great Simon. Now, after the resurrection, there was a great big Peter, but still there was a small Simon inside of him, who brought out a desire from his heart, a proposition, let's go and try the word of small Simon. Let's go and try it. I'm going fishing. And he, who had carried away James and John, and he had filled his boat with fish, now he's carrying them away to go fishing by themselves without Christ. All night they were casting nets and they didn't catch a thing. Simon, small Simon, a failure. And today, my brethren, we must understand this. All of us, that inside of us there is an unsuccessful George, I'm speaking for myself now, a worldly George, and a successful George who's a Christian. The Christian must increase and the worldly one must decrease. And in the end, the worldly one must be uprooted so only the Christian can be left there. Do it, Lord. Please do it. Please, Christ, do it.
bring down all that's shaken. To take them out, throw them out. With his desires, his ambitions, this Simon, the unprofitable, vile person, earthly person, the old Adam. And so the new Adam can be left standing. Peter, in the presence of God, in the glory of Christ. And when in the morning they saw their nets empty, they saw someone across from them crying out to them, Children, have you any food? John said, It's the Lord. Cast your net on the right of the boat and you will find some. It's the Lord. Now the great fight is on. Peter is growing. I will try again the word of God. Again the word of this person. I will cast my nets. And his nets were filled with 153 fish. Nice fish, good fish. And the net was not torn. He dove in the sea. Peter now. Now Simon is starting to decrease, but he has to vanish. They all come out and they saw a fish ready to be eaten. Eat, eat, Christ said to them. And when they ate, now Jesus is talking to Simon, the son of Jonah. And now the great change will take place. He will be upgraded. He will vanish. Simon, son of Jonah, will vanish and only Peter will be left, the servant of God. Hallelujah. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? The great change. The bringing down. He will bring down his life. He will vanish, Simon. I love you, Lord, you know this. Feed my lambs. A great change. You will not be a fisherman anymore. You will be a shepherd, a pastor. You will not even think of catching fish. But you will think of how to tend and feed and take care of my sheep, the sheep of my flock. Three questions, three times. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me, Simon? And Peter was sad. He said, Lord, you know that I love you. And with this, Lord, you know I love you, made Simon, the son of Jonah, vanish. And Peter, the son of the living God, was left standing. You know that when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. Simon was a different person, and Peter will be a different person. But now, follow me. And Peter made the great decision. Not as then when he left everything behind, but now he took out of inside of him Simon, the son of Jonah. He was uprooted. The great earthquake took place. Now, the mountain of the Lord's house, which is Peter, is above all things. Now, the house is ready. The house of God. Now there's no cobwebs or rubbish. No past. Just a present, which is Christ, and a future, which is the kingdom of heaven. And Peter followed him. And he followed him upon his word. That's what follow me means. Remain in my word. Whatever I say, you will do. You will only listen to me. You will only follow me. You will only glorify me. You will only be careful of me. You will walk on my footprints. Go now to Jerusalem in the upper room. Because there I will send another help by the spirit of truth. And he went, once he saw Christ's ascension, and the fiftieth day, a sound from heaven 
as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Like then, when Moses pulled up and finished the tabernacle, the Holy Spirit flooded it and was filled with the presence of God. When later on, Solomon built the temple of God and he finished it completely. It was flooded by the glory of God and the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. Like now, when Simon, the son of Jonah, vanished, not only became smaller, but vanished, then the power of the Holy Spirit came and dwelt in Peter. And now Peter isn't anymore, not Simon, the son of Jonah, but nor even Peter, the fisherman, but nor Peter, the shepherd. He is Peter, the Apostle of Jesus Christ. Full of power and faith. Full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Full of wisdom and understanding. A man separated by God through Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. So God can work with his hands. And not only Peter but also James, John, and all the disciples, and the 120 men and women. And with one sermon of Peter, 3,000 souls were saved. And the multitude of those who believed were one heart and one soul. With the great power of the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. And so, the Church of Christ was created. And now, that there is a Church of Christ, now the time came for all the shaken to be brought down, for the twelve gods of Olympus to be brought down, Baal and other gods to be brought down, for the idols to be brought down. The time has come for the great earthquake to take place. God to shake heaven and earth so nothing can be left standing and upon the mountain for the Lord's house to be established and all the nations shall flow to it and they will say come let's go up so we can cut some wood come let's go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of God, because we sowed a lot, but we reaped a little. We planted and we not gather. We eat and we're not filled. We drink and we're not happy. We work and our wage bag has holes in it. We cast our nets and we don't catch any fish. We strive and we fail. Come, let's climb the mountain of the Lord's house, because there Christ will teach us. New things, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The words of God will reveal to us new things, the kingdom of heaven. He will lead us on a new way, which is difficult, but it's a good way, which leads to eternal life. My beloved brethren, today let's make that decision. Let's climb that mountain. We know now what's inside of us. There is Simon, but there's also Peter. But Simon must not only become small, but he must be uprooted. So the glory of God can flood the house of God in our lives, in our family. I repeat this with a lot of pain. Firstly, look to yourselves. Firstly, let's be careful of our house, our body, our life, our personal life. So, Simon can become small and vanish. So, Peter 
can remain and grow the Son of God. So our life can be flooded with the glory of God, our family with the glory of God, our church in which Christ has added us to with the glory of God, so the name of Christ can be glorified. Let us climb that mountain. And you know, the climb is personal. Each one of us on our own will climb that mountain, cut wood, so he can build the house of God, the living God. And let's leave the panelled houses behind, our own houses. Let's leave our own fight in the hands of Christ. May God bless it. Let's try the word of God. And we'll see how alive it is, how true it is. The word of Christ, the power of God that saves who believes in it. Let's try it, brethren. And we will be astonished by it. We will see a catch of fish that we've never seen before. And it will fill our own boat and the boats of our brethren. That's why I'm saying this Friday, let's make a new beginning. This year, let's start with an all-night prayer. Let's climb that mountain. Let's cut some wood. And on Sunday, in fasting, fasting and prayer, until 3.30 or 4, because we've got a wedding afterwards. doesn't matter how long we'll stay on our knees. But what does matter is for us to go with our souls, our hearts, our minds, and our strength to adore Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen.